Kathleen, you have no sound. Is there no sound, Kathleen? Then I think it's your problem, Kathleen. Just one minute. I would take a glass of water. Yeah. Ingeborg takes a glass of wine. So from Australia, great. Trina Bailey from Australia, welcome. India, great people. We have people from India, great. Welcome. And from Tenerife, Stephen. Everybody welcome. Spike Inisse. <laughs> Hello, Danny. From Oldenburg, Ray, Ekaterina, Russia, who's a stroke? <laughs> You're welcome, Danny, Dvani, Elana, Christian from Ottawa, Canada, fantastic. Inge from Luzern, The Hague Hans, Marianne Hoogreide. Hello, Kurt. Okay, Bruno. Okay, so um, I will uh, put on my uh, my screen so you can take a look at me. Uh, welcome, everybody. A special word of welcome for Bruno, um, colleague from from France, who is also next to is an osteopath. He's a gastroenterologist, and um, he's very well known in the osteopathic field because of his knowledge, especially the knowledge uh, in the combination of um, complementary medicine and general medicine. And uh, we did uh, a lot of workshop with, with Bruno and um, it was always, always very, very interesting. And uh, in every workshop, he enlightened the, the importance of, of viruses uh, in all kinds of diseases. And when this, this pandemic uh, started, the COVID-19, uh, I directly had to think about, about Bruno. And I already sent him an, um, uh, a mail, what do you think about the COVID? And then 
that yeah, we have to see. And a, a week later, uh, we had another contact. He said, "I'm. I think I'm. I'm. I'm ready to share my uh, my knowledge." And so it's uh, it's fantastic that he wants to uh, give a presentation over Zoom, and um, he will introduce himself and uh, enlighten uh, what he's going to uh, to to uh, tell that it is not for severe cases, but it is more preventive. I think it's good to to say this. Um, uh, I have a, a question for you. Uh, we have a chat. Um, do you want to ch use the chat only for very important things? Because I will take a look at um, if there are important questions on the chat and when there is a lot of communication on, on the chat, it is hard for me. So please only use the chat for very important things and not for chatting, then use your WhatsApp. So um, uh, Bruno, it's up to you. Um, Thank you, Rene. Looking forward to hear what you have to share. So the COVID inf um, infection is a good opportunity to speak about the synergy of immunity and microbiota regarding inflammation. And my specialization in gastroenterology is mainly linked to dysbiosis, vagal nerve and viral infection. And I think it's uh, it's really a good illustration of what may occur, what you do not have the right biota in the gut. So COVID-19 was a foreseeable complication of mild infections in our society when you have more and more metabolic diseases. So first, uh, it is probably a reminder, but it is an RNA virus very uh, sensible to soap and uh, you may simply have very good prophylactic measures by washing frequently your hands. Uh, keep the distance, one meter is not enough. Four meters is uh, the, the only way to uh, not be able to be contaminated by somebody expelling small particles from the mouth. And it may go up to eight meters. Uh, usually you have to cook or steam food, vegetables, because uh, COVID-19 virus has been detected in water, no, no drinking water uh, with which you will uh, wash vegetables or at least uh, put in your garden to, to get vegetables. Incubation is quite short, uh, around five days. However, viral excretions, uh, excretion um, lasts for almost two weeks and in certain cases, 37 days. Uh, what is more uh, um, problematic is that you have a high rate of contagious uh, patients and you may find also the virus in feces 20 days after its disappearance in saliva. And uh, nine to 10 percent of Q patients excrete the virus. So many, many patients will be contagious several days after uh, the, the infection is apparently cured. The virus is also present in water, but also on surfaces for several days, plastics and metals. And the bad news, the bad piece of news, is that almost everybody will be contaminated, so we should be prepared to be with a high rate, with a high percentage, to be contaminated with the COVID-19. So to be prepared, you need to have a good antiviral immunity and to decrease risk factors, which are now well, well identified, especially cardiovascular inflammation related to metabolic syndrome. So really two eye spots, viral anti uh, viral uh, immunity and decreased metabolic syndrome because everybody will be concerned with this infection. Um, regarding symptoms, 
uh, in adults, 99% of patients present with symptoms. In children, less than 2%, as if they were resistant or asymptomatic, and we will see later why. In adults, um, patients may have a mild pneumonia with mild fever, and only 13% will have severe pneumonia. In these patients, uh, the, the risk is very high because they will, they may develop multi-organ system failure because the virus is spread uh, all over the, the main organs, um, the lung, the heart, the liver, the spleen, but also all systems where you have endothelium parts. The death rate is then very high and it depends on the country. And it is difficult to have very good figures because you have difference in viral testing and detection um, variable regarding the health care system and the age and also the percentage of metabolic syndrome. Uh, usually, the contamination is related to uh, the surfaces, and uh, from the study in China, uh, they show that the virus is spread and distributed on the floor, computer uh, cans, and all places where you can put your hands. And the detection in the air of the particle is four meters from uh, contaminating patients. So uh, I would say uh, the, the risk of contamination is very high. COVID-19 is present, of course, in mouth um, with a very high rate within the first, rate, uh, first week. Sorry, Seroconversion uh, occurs after seven days in 50% of patients, but it's not always followed with a rapid decline of virus and the virus may still replicate uh, despite seroconversion. So seroconversion is not the proof of non-contamination. It is found in stools in 48% of patients, even when they are tested negative in the mouth. And therefore, uh, caution, caution is very important when you have to proceed to endoscopic procedures now. So everything should be postponed for, I think, at least several months. In animals, COVID-19 COVID, um, has been found, especially in cats and bovidae and rodents, uh, less frequently in dogs and children and chickens or ducks. So uh, take care of, uh, of pets regarding COVID, they may be infected. Uh, one uh, key point is that the virus enter the target cell uh, using the angiotensin converting enzyme 2, what I will call ACE2 protein. ACE2 protein is widely expressed in all organs, lungs, cardiovascular, any place when there, where there is endothelium, gut, kidney, central nervous system, adipose tissue, testes, and ovaries. This will have consequences regarding late complications. Now we are only in the first step of the epidemic, and um, we will get within few months the consequences of late and long-lasting infections. This is only the first wave. ACE2 has multiple physiological roles. It's linked to immunity, inflammation, cardiovascular disease, and probably fertility. It protects against heart failure, lung disease, and diabetes. Um, when the virus stuck to the ACE2 uh, receptor, you will have a lose in the ACE function. 
due to endostosis and proteolysis, and you will have a decrease in the ACE2 function, ACE2 protective function. You will have an increase in ACE in the serum, especially when you have eosinophilic granuloma and very active macrophages, what we call M1 inflammation, M4 macrophage. So you have two pathways, the pathway of angiotensin stimulating the receptor type 1, 81 receptor. You will have inflammation of all vessels of the heart, the lung, and this is vasodilatorious. And you will have the ACE2 pathways, the 82 receptor pathways, which is protector. When you cut this as ACE2, you will have vasodilatorious effect, especially in patients already 81 receptor activated. So you have two types, the type one, which is associated with vasoconstriction, inflammation, hypertrophic reaction, with pre-existing hypertension, diabetes, coronary disease, and this is the wrong activation with a high risk of death. And you have the second type of receptor, which will be cut by a virus after infection. It is type 282 pathway. This is low affinity, presynaptic, and protective. So ACE2 proteolysis induced by COVID-19 infections is the leading to the same complication uh, than diabetes. As you can see on the left, you have in all these diseases which are associated with granulomatous disorders, an increased rate of ACE level in the serum because you have increased proteolysis and you have the cutting of the ACE2 uh, part which becomes soluble. It means that you are not anymore protected and this is linked with hyperglycemia, granulomatosis, and with ongoing viral infection. Pollution is activating, is not known to activate the 81 pathway and is mainly associated with eosinophilic granuloma in the lung and in the nose. It's probably why the most polluted area are linked with the ius viral lethality and it has been published that fine dust is associated with decreased nitric oxide level increased aggregation and increased activation of the angiotensin system the 81 receptor pathway and when you treat and decrease with an inhibitor of this system you improve endothelial function in polluted areas. We can make the parallel with eosinophils and digestive disease. This is exactly the same pathogenetic pathway. And uh, you have in that case in the esophagus, for example, but you may have this in the stomach, in the duodenum, in the jejunum. You will have a first step of inflammation then inflammation plus fibrosis and then fibrosis with decreased reactivity, elasticity, and decreased voiding of the stomach, of the jejunum, or decreased elasticity of cardiovascular system. And this eosinophilic diseases is highly increasing with time and is associated with the metabolic syndrome epidemic. There is a role, of course, of dysbiosis because when you have the wrong microbiota, you get eosinophilia and fibrosing microbiota. It favors M1 induced inflammation with cardiopulmonary disease, an increased eosinophilic reaction almost everywhere, and you have in the jejunum, in a patient with obesity, an increased 
spasm and fibrosis on the first loop of the jejunum, which injure the voiding of the stomach. You have in the ACE2 defective pathway a decrease in NO production and you have the wrong bacterial production because you have very low diversity in your biota, in your stomach and in your jejunum. In um, hypertensive rats, you have a decrease in microbiotal richness with, and device, diversity with a decreased acetate and butyrate production. And you have in parallel a decrease in the AT2 pathway. The similar dysbiosis is found in hypertensive patients. And you may, when you have excess inflammation decrease temporarily this inflammation with minocycline and you get back some acetate or butyrate production. This is an example when you have an excess of inflammation and dysbiosis with an excess of biota in the, in the gut, you may get back some acromantia and anti-inflammatory bacteria or bacteria that is in the gut. And these two types of flora are associated with increased nitric oxide production because you have two types of nitric oxide production, one coming from all cells and epithelium and nerves, and one coming from bacteria, approximately 50-50% between the two um, possibilities. 50% for bacteria from the gut, 50% for all cells, endothelium and or nerves. You may use minocycline also intracerebrally and it will inhibit also the inflammation and will decrease hypertension, sympathetic activity and left ventricular hypertrophy, which means that you have a global uh, macrophage 1 inflammation, not only in the gut, in the lung, but also in the brain. It's why when you have an explosion of cytokines, you will have a severe inflammation of all organs and probably of the brain. Angiotensin converting enzyme can be inhibited with 81 antagonist or directly with captopril. And this will normalize blood pressure, but also will decrease dysbiosis and leaky gut. It explained that it's, you do not need to use antibiotics. You may also regular, uh, regularize uh, biota with ACE2-1 inhibitor. Another possibility is to change diet. High consumption of fibers increases acetate producing bacteria and it reduces systolic and diastolic blood pressure, fibrosis and left ventricular hypertrophy. You will have that way uh, direct down regulation of the renin angiotensin system. You will increase the su survival to sepsis because you will that way with acetate production decrease the inflammation relating to lipopolysaccharide uh, coming from the gut. And the difference is quite impressive. Most of this effect is related to small gas and especially nitric oxide and hydrogen sulfate. They are both involved in neuromodulation, oxidative stress control, cardiovascular tone regulation and immunomodulation. Hydrogen sulfate is an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and vasoactive gas it controls automatic cardio uh, 
pulmonary and gastrointestinal function and prevents autophagia and therefore lung in acute lung injury. injury. Nitric oxide is the most powerful autophagial stimulator and it downregulates 81 pathway. It decreases the entry of all coronary virus in target cells. One of the main key factor for severity is the metabolic syndrome and overweight. Overweight is associated with a decreased diversity of flora, usually uh, secondary to an excess or excessive treatment of antibiotic therapy. It is associated with less hydrogen, nitric oxide, hydrogen sulfate or methane production and increase in circulating ceramids. You have less acetic or butyric acid and when you decrease weight you have a decreased concentration of ceramids and an increased concentration of methane, NO and hydrogen sulfate. Ceramids are implicated in the entry of all coronavirus in all cells because ceramids are found in the high concentration on the Golgi apparatus. And when you decrease ceramid concentration, you decrease the contamination by coronavirus. Ceramids are long chain fatty acids. They are sensitized in excess in the gut, especially in patients with metabolic syndrome. They are difficult to eliminate and create inflammation and most probably local eosinophilic small granuloma everywhere, everywhere when the fat is concentrated before elimination, which means the lung for gases, uh, small chain fatty acids, the liver, close to biliary uh, ducts, but also the gut, of course, and the kidney. Metabolic syndrome is associated with macrophage activation and with a decrease in helicobacter pylori uh, enterotype you have an increased risk of asthma and allergy associated with increased eosinophils. Bariatric surgery is able to bypass the part of the stomach, duodenum, jejunum, which is uh, um, inflamed and uh, which has not any more movement and which is uh, injured by fibrosis. And this bypass will um, switch the dysbiosis to new type of bacteria able to resynthesize NO. And therefore, biotric surgery is sometimes solving the problem of metabolic syndrome simply by switching up these um, bacteria and switching up the synthesis of NO. And it occurs usually very quickly within three months. So this was the part of the pathogeny, pathogeny of the COVID-19. And now we will switch a little bit more to practice. The major risk factors which has been identified are the following. Pre-existing chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is inflammation, chronic inflammation, usually with eosinophilia, cerebral vascular disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension. There is no correlation of any increased risk of COVID-19 with pre-existing liver disease, 
renal disease, malignancy, we will see that in malignancy, uh, this is not totally true for recent cancer treatment. But um, old medical history of malignancy is not related to increased risk of COVID-19. Major risk factor are in fact associated with decreased pathway of ACE2. And the crew mortality is associated with age, <coughs> older than 80 or even 60. And in this patient, the number of ACE2 protein are highly decreased. You have no or almost no risk in patients younger than 50, and then it increases very rapidly. Metabolic syndrome is, of course, a key factor. You may uh, have an action on this uh, very easily. You have recently treated cancer with an increase um, of mortality, as, I, as you can see, the odd ratio is up to 5.3 because you have in this recently treated patient a decreased immunity and in, an increased risk of spread of any viruses. Biological parameters are associated with severe cases are decreased lymphocyte T counts, decreased eosinophils, which are present in the tissues in granuloma and destroyed by histocytes. You have increased D DML levels because you have histocytes in vessels which are eating endothelium and you have clots. You have increased ferritinemia and of course you have CRP increased. This immune cytokine burst or hyperactivation is associated with destruction of white blood cells, what we call hemophagocytosis. And the term has been used for the first time in this public, recent publication, hemophagocytosis, which is quite classical when you have multiple organ failure. You have destruction of blood cells in the lung, the livers and spleen, and you get multiple organ failure and it has always been published and associated with a very high mortality rate, close to 40%. Causes of hemophagocytosis are quite well known for years. And usually it is reactivation of herpes viruses, cytomegaloviruses, and especially Epstein-Barr viruses. You have granulocytomatosis, we have already spoken about that, sarcoidosis, mycobacteria, local reaction to ceramids, and medication which may decrease uric acid, like antibiotics and allopurinol. Lupus is always associated with um, a risk of histiocytosis and hemophagocytosis, and it is known to be associated with severity of COVID-19 infection. You have in that case, in the case of lupus, hypomethylation and overexpression of ACE2. You have therefore an increased possibility for the virus to enter in the cell. Uh, viral infections themselves may exacerbate hypomethylation, especially herpes viruses. And this viral infection, herpes infection, will also, will also demethylate interferon and therefore exacerbate immune response. In lupus, you have epigenetic control, well-established epigenetic control of ACE2 methylation associated with virus. So you have always to control concomitant concomitant viral infections when you suspect COVID. Um, still with lupus and this study, these two studies, you have uh, with 
flares of acute viral infection associated with lupus? Yes? Yes? Is there any question? I'm not... No, there was no question. I didn't no hear question. anything. No, no, no. Okay, no. okay. I think somebody put on his microphone. Uh, that, that, that's no, okay. everything as well. Everything as well. So with lepus, you have frequently acute viral infections with hemophagocytosis, as you can see here, or disseminated infection, or what we call catastrophic clots and thrombosis. And they are all associated with viral hyper super infection, viral super infection. You have here CMV, Epstein Barr hepatitis, parvovirus. But when you have severe organ failure, it is always, always herpetic virus. CMV, herpes simplex, Epstein Barr, varicella zona infection. And here with this clot, it's always cytomegalovirus. Hemophagocytosis, and therefore severe case in COVID, could be associated with mainly these two herpes virus, Epstein Barr, and this will be reoccurrence, reactivation induced by superinfection of lungs. CMV is known to hypomethylate not only the receptor ACE2, but also interferon gamma. And you have a uh, um, driving force of immunosenescence related to this hypomethylation, and therefore it will mainly concern elderly patients. So, this explained probably also part of the process. Metabolic syndrome is himself associated with viruses, and you have an increased rate of herpes simplex, CMV, hepatitis A, associated with increased rate. When you have no infection, you have almost no risk of overweight. You have a second type of virus, adenovirus, which is found in the jejunum, leading to inflammation and fibrosis of the jejunum and leading to overweight, which should be taken into account. Adenovirus are themselves associated with hemophagocytosis and it is well known in oncohematology. 17% of children is also associated with autoimmunity and undiagnosed hemophagocytosis, with, which is much more frequent than we can think. So adenovirus is related to lymphohistiocytic hematophagocytosis. So I think we can say that one of the key protective role of NO is obtained through the control of viruses. And when you have a decreased production of gas NO from bacteria, you have an increase nitrate, which is non-gases uh, nitric oxide, which will be oxidated to nitrate and then nitrates, which are oxidant. So when you have no gases NO from bacteria, you are getting more oxidized. And it explains why you have some severe lung insufficiency in this pandemia H1N1, and it was related to viral infections and with decreased NO. Last point regarding obesity and diabetes, that this disease, this metabolic syndrome, is associated with mucosal infection, which may, through leaky gut, lead to systemic inflammation, especially Citrobacter, because when you have killed all the good biota, it remains Acinetobacter and Citrobacter, which are very invasive bacteria through, through mucosa. So good bacteria producing NO are protecting the mucosa because they avoid proliferation of this Citrobacter species. 
when you have herpes virus which replicate many times you have an enhanced receptor for the herpes virus it is called hvem and this receptor is also a cause of chronic inflammation and macrophage inflammation in practice you have according to this knowledge try to decrease the replication of herpes viruses this is a key point so you have to detect any patient with a risk of recurrence hepatic flares allergic skin reactions periodontitis gingivitis chronic rhinitis associated always with eosinophilia shingles all these patients are at risk you may test the igg cmv in order to know whether the patient has probably hypomethylation and lack of immunity you may test the level of antibodies by simply an electrophoresis of protein and the quantity of gamma globulin this is a first step evaluate the antiviral immunity the second evaluate the diversity of microbiota please do not perform fecal examination it has no value this is the oral biota the gastric um, the lung biota which is useful you need to measure the nitric oxide level in the nose or in the stomach you have to to check with a small device device which is used for breath testing it has the advantage to be able to measure nitric oxide the second possibility is to check for active viral infection when the patient comes after fasting you should not find any hydrogen in breath testing when you find hydrogen it means that cells from the mucosa are destroyed and eaten by bacteria and usually this is related to viral active infection and i'm still having consultation and it's very easy to know now whether a patient is infected you have very high level of hydrogen with patient fasting for at least 10 hours in that case i'm giving coriolis which is small mushroom and this hydrogen level is decreasing cut by at least 50 percent within 30 minutes which confirm the viral origin so it's very easy with this tester this e nose to detect first nitric oxide and second hydrogen in a patient coming with a an empty stomach after fasting and the last point is if you have a good annual level you will have a good vagal tonus and this is a key point for osteopath because they are sometimes able to stretch or to stimulate the navel nerve and to repair um, the motricity of the gut or even the quality of the elasticity of the lung which is very favorable for a good anal level so good vagal tonus may be investigated with a simple ruffier dixon test testing the gastroduodenal voiding and it is frequently associated with anxiety or depression when you have a decreased vagal tonus um, in france i don't know whether it has been uh, debated elsewhere but in france the use of chloroquine was debated as well as use of antibiotics in fact chloroquine can be used it was also uh, in the netherlands uh, bruno okay yeah. yeah and in other i, I know all the uh, countries too yeah. yeah so it is successfully used again hemophagocytosis when it starts because it decreases m1 it is a macrophage inhibitor and it increases no 
However, it may induce severe adverse events and it cannot be recommended in prevention, especially in patients without risk factors or without a severe infections, because you have not a good balance between the benefits and the risk. And I think that we should use other ways to prevent. And it's better to have, uh, without any risk, um, an action against virus and an action for better microbiota. So here you have no risk because chloroquine is really able to induce uh, severe adverse events. So the first step will be to increase the quality of the flora and you will, you will not increase on long-term quality of flora with antibiotics. It will always end after one or two weeks with a decreased quality of the flora. So when you want to prevent something, start to decrease weight and to increase the flora with an increased green vegetables, no flaws, no alcohol, and decrease body weight. You may stimulate the vagal nerve, you may use osteopathy, of course, you may use stimulation with a small device, electrostimulation of the left and the right vagal nerve with frequency of 10 Hertz. This will inhibit, this will inhibit the macrophage inflammation. And I'm frequently using polyphenols and this will be propolis or Coriolis to inhibit M1 and it works quite well. You will have an efficacy against inflammation and against virus. Um, think to hospitalize the people. So it will mean that you come too late as soon as you get eye fever and dyspnea. Check for the level of arterial levels of oxygen levels and dioxide carbon level. Check for olfaction disturbances, diarrhea, apathetic flares, hypertension drugs, and make a blood test to check for eosinophils, lymphocytes, glycemia, uric acids. I think nasal detection. You know, uh, do, you have, yes? do you have an explanation why uh, as one of the... Sorry, sorry, I missed the yeah. end. Yeah, sorry. Uh, do you have an explanation why as f uh, one of the first symptoms of corona, uh, olfaction is, is disturbed? Yes, is it, yes, yeah? it will come later. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. This is very important, very, yeah. very important. The key okay. question, thank you, Rene. What I'm, what I'm doing is to check with the breast test all my patients as soon as they have high level of hydrogen, I consider that they are replicating a virus and probably herpes virus or coronavirus. And then I'm treating with vitamin D and Coriolis. I'm checking that it works within 30 minutes. So it's a key point. No replicating virus in any patient. No replicating virus. So to treat virus, Coriolis, to increase NO, you may use so uh, Coriolis or Ganoderma plus Coriolis. You may use to increase NO mixture with nettles or Canopodium. You should kill bad bacteria, which has anaerobic bacteria you will find in the mouth and which will compete with bacteria producing nitric oxide. So simply most mouthwash with diluted hydrogen peroxide, decrease any source of Firmicutes bacteria. So decrease fun maps, which means decrease prebiotic, increase lemon and sports, not swimming because as soon as you have low temperature, you increase the replication of viruses. As soon as you have chloride or bromide, you will increase Epstein by virus replication. Always select hot drinks and hot temperature to make sports. Vitamin D is probably useful. 
So increase levels of vitamin D, double levels of vitamin D, and it will help to kill the virus. On my point of view, don't use antibiotics or oral essential oils. You will never help the production of NO. You will have no antiviral effect, no effect on glycemia, hypertension. So in prevention, it is a mistake. As soon as you have high fever and pneumonia, then you can. But before this, do not treat with antibiotic. So when you have mild fever and before pulmonary superinfection, vitamin D, Coriolis, valaciclovir when you have expression of herpes viruses and drop all non-vital drops, drugs and food complements. The problem with COVID-19 is that we will get late complications. And you may, of course, do your best to avoid severe cases and deaths, but you should also do your best to avoid late complications. And this will concern neurology, fertility, oncology, and cardiovascular consequences on lung, heart, and kidney. Neurologic manifestations are very frequent. 36% in hospitalized patients with severe problems. But it's even more frequent in patients with mild forms. It is 85 to 88% of patients with mild form that they have olfactory and gustatory dysfunctions. Female are more affected than male. And I think you can make the link with an old infection associated with uh, the Spanish flu uh, epidemia. This is von economo encephalitis. This von economo encephalitis was at the same period of time as the Spanish flu, 1950, 15 to 1926, uh, and it ends to severe Parkinson's disease. It, um, it strike, striked uh, almost 10 million of people or even more, and it ends to death because there is a Nigro olfactory projection, which means when you have loss of olfaction, the virus can spread within 10 centimeters to the locus cerulaeus uh, nucleus. So there is a direct link between the virus, loss of olfaction, and risk of Parkinson's disease. And the virus is an RNA virus. It has been identified in the locus cerulaeus. 81 pathway is associated with inflammation and is implicated is cognitive in cognitive decline. When you have activation of this pathway, it means inflammation in the locus cerulaeus and increased risk of hypertension and it decreases synthesis of dopamine. If you treat nasally with losartan, an inhibitor of Th1 pathway, you have decreased amount of amyloid fold and it decreased inflammation and an increase in dopamine in the locus cerulaeus, which confirm the link between the nose and the locus cerulaeus. So the virus is always in the nose and spread rapidly to the nerves and people who develop olfaction problems are at high risk to develop complication of the locus cerulaeus. So overactivity of the 81 pathway in 
enhances the aging process and neuroinflammation. And you, sh you should take into consideration that the 82 pathways is decreasing with age, and it's probably an explanation of this neurodegenerative disease uh, progressing with age. When you use the misotin, which is blocker of inflammation, and at 81 agonist, you have also a decreased inflammation, and uh, you have also a benefit in neurodegenerative disease. And this inflammation will decrease uh, the inflammation induced by, by LPS Prevotella, which has been implicated in periodontitis. Prevotella is sensible to low dose of hydrogen peroxide. So clean your mouth and decrease viral replication. Simply here, not with antibiotic because you will end with Citrobacter or Acinetobacter in high level with more severe M1 inflammation within a few weeks. So you have to simply clean anaerobic bacteria from the mouth because the problem is node and mouth. You have not to kill all bacteria, simply clean the mouth and the nose. COVID is also associated with fertility. Men with COVID has decreased lutein hormone and it suggests hypogonadism. And we have several cases of myself diagnosed some cases of epididymitis and orchitis associated with COVID patients. And there is, and it's an argu supplementary argument, a locus between, um, an association between the locus cerulis and the testis axis. Cardiac and testicular, testicular hypertrophies are related with 81 binding and it is associated with local cerulis hyperinflammation in hypertensive rats. 81 is also associated with cancer because it decreases um, the immunity. And when you give antagonist, you have an increased function of or ability to decrease cancer with the checkpoint inhibitors, which are called PDL1 antibodies, and more and more used in cancer. So you have, and we know already this in oncology, you need to have a good biota for a good action of these PDL1 antibodies. And it depends on the 81 status. There is actually a good link between the biota, the anti-cancer activity, and the metabolic syndrome through, through the 81 pathway. Vascular remodeling is associated with angiotensin II in excess, the 81 pathway, and it decreases osteopontin. Osteopontin is produced by mastocytes and eosinophils. They are associated with atherosclerotic plaques and coronary disease. When you block osteopontins, you decrease vascular remodeling. Osteopontin is synthesized in all mucosa and associated with eosinophils and they stimulate tumors, they facilitate metastasis and they are correlated with fibrosis and therefore pulmonary function decline. This is just to remind that it is not a fiction of theoretical um, uh, data. It, osteopontin is really associated with global survival in humans. And there is a very tremendous difference between those with high and those with low osteopontin, which mean eosinophil levels. So in conclusion, take care. Almost everybody will be contaminated. There is no other possibility because the vaccine will perhaps not protect against the virus and not everybody 
will get a good level of antibiotics. So be prepared and increase your antiviral immunity. Decrease risk factor and especially the bad biota associated M1 inflammation. So decrease any factors of the metabolic syndrome. Think of delayed complications. Um, it may take two or three years, but we will get a very high level of complication because of this badly managed uh, acute infection, which will spread to other organs, especially to the locus cerealis. Avoid anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressant agents that will help the spread. Increase antiviral immunity once more and nitric oxide um, production. And therefore, don't use antibiotic therapy on long terms. It will increase uh, low diversity of your biota. Thank you very much of your attention. And I'm fantastic. waiting for your questions. Yeah, fantastic, uh, Bruno. What a lot of information in a short uh, period. It's fantastic. There are some questions in the, in the chat. Uh, the first question is, uh, what do you think about Ravinsara? Is this maybe helpful? Ravinsara is an essential oil which, which is largely used in practice against virus. Unfortunately, we made in our group uh, um, um, an investigation in a short, with short number of patients, but it was almost 40, and 20 with apatic flares, and 20 with apatic flares with Ravinsara. So first with placebo, second with Ravinsara. Ravinsara was not effective against virus and apat virus flares. And therefore, I, I will not suggest use of essential oils. I've got several patients who started this treatment and they destroy the flora because they are using high level of, um, of essential oils, including Ravinsara. So first, there is no publication. We check and it doesn't work. Um, and second, please measure the gases before treating patients. If they have NO, please do not destroy NO. If they do not have NO, you will not increase the diversity of buta with Ravinsara or, or any other essential oils. So please measure before treating yeah. and check you have increased NO and reach your target. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, people ask um, how to clean the nose and how to clean the, the mouth. So the mouth can be cleaned with diluted hydrogen peroxide. You will lose, use 3%, uh, 10 volumes of hydrogen peroxide diluted with, uh, uh, we would say, uh, one teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide and two teaspoons of uh, tap water and then you will clean the, the tongue, the gingiva, the, the teeth and you will spit without rinsing and you will kill anaerobics. You do this every day and uh, I would say uh, at least for six months. I would not suggest any use of essential oils uh, in the mouth in that time. Okay. Um, how should we clean for the nose? nose? For the nose, yeah. you may use perhaps if you have allergic rhinitis, you may use red LEDs. There are small devices that cost, I would say, between 30 and 35 euros. And uh, you put them five minutes per day and you will clean all propionic bacteria which are associated with granuloma in the nose, the mouth, and which sometimes helps the virus to go to the olfactive nerves. So you may clean this way. Never forget that you have usually herpetic uh, recurrences. So treat the herpes virus when you have rhinitis or when you have periodontitis. 
so vitamin D, Coriolis, and if necessary, valaciclovir. Okay. Um, there is um, uh, known that in malaria, thalassemia uh, may reduce the risk. Do you think it's the same for COVID? I think you it's prob yes. I think it's probably the same, and it is probably related to um, the quantity of a ACE2 uh, proteins and the pathway between the 81 and 82 receptor. There is probably also a different concentration of ceramides on the Golgi uh, apparatus. So uh, this is quite clear that ceramides are different in these populations. Okay, what do you think about lactoferrin as a treatment? Lactoferrin. Yeah. I have no idea, I must say. Okay. I have no idea. It was a, a question of Inneborg. Uh, people have CMV in the past and outbreaks of herpes. Uh, is it worth using CMV and herpes homeopathic nosodes to treat? I think it's a risk factor. So you have to treat and you have to check whether the treatment, the the homeopathic treatment is uh, efficacious. So it's not enough to try to treat. It's necessary to be efficacious because you otherwise you will have late complications. So first you have to check an increase in the uh, lymphocyte count. Second, an increase in the gamma globulin level and perhaps you have to check a decrease in IgG CMV level. Okay, um, so there was a question about uh, the red light. Eh? This is a device, a red light device. Eh? It's LED light, but you can buy. Uh, it's easy to, to buy. And tomorrow we will give some information about the Vegas nerve stimulator because uh, we will send you the, the uh, the place where to buy it in the Netherlands and you can uh, um, so um, there is um, the dose for the cleaning of the the mouth is another question can you repeat the dose Bruno for how to clean the mouth so hydrogen peroxide three percent you put a teaspoon in a glass then you add two teaspoons of tap water. You put the hole in the mouth. You clean with a toothbrush the, the tongue, the teeth, and the gingiva, 20 seconds. And then you spit without rinsing. You do this every day. And for a long-term period, let's say six months, and then you will have killed the anaerobic bacteria, including propionibacterium. These bacteria are associated with eosinophilic reactions. They are also associated, like physobacterium, with decreased immunity and an increased risk of cancer of the colon, the pancreas, the liver, and the lung. So you will do two treatments in one, decrease the risk of cancer induced by oral bacteria and increase immunity against virus by decreasing eosinophilic granuloma. Okay. Um, yeah, the, you know, the, the lecture, the webinar is recorded. So everybody that wants to take another look and maybe uh, do it a little bit slower and make some, uh, some, some notes, yeah, that's all possible. Uh, there are a lot of references uh, given by Bruno, so you can take a look at the references. Um, and of course, we will do workshops when we can do workshops. Uh, we plan two workshops, one we planned in June already, so it's a little bit uh, critical, but we will see what's going to happen. And this will be in Cologne, in Germany. And Bruno will talk two days, and I will do one day about the Vegas nerve. And then in the fall, we have a second lecture with, um, with Bruno, of course, with Bruno also uh, two days. 
Um, we have a lot of information uh, about last lectures, so people who are interested, we can send, uh, send the information or put it on, on our website so you can download it. I think I, I, the, there are, of course, much more questions. It's such a fascinating topic. Uh, but I want to thank Bruno uh, thank for you, a Renee. fantastic uh, story, a fantastic uh, webinar. It's uh, again uh, mind-blowing and I think I need some time to, to work out. There is one question about probiotics. Christian uh, Albrecht um, he's, he's asking uh, what do you think about the preventive use of probiotics? So this is really the last question that we are going to answer. Yes. So there are new types of probiotics, I would say. New types should increase NO production. So old probiotics should be dropped because they are not, they are not um, um, devoted to increase the NO because NO is only increased by oral bacteria since they are these bacteria are mainly found in the salivary glands and nitric levels, nitrate levels are concentrated 20 times in these salivary glands. So probiotics should colonize mucosa in uh, the, the mouth and spread also in the nose. So you have an NO level uh, high enough to protect against viruses. So uh, probiotics which are sold now are not uh, able to do that. So once again, first measure or learn how to measure NO in the nose and in the stomach and then be able to increase it when necessary. Never use antibiotic essential oils. I would suggest to use rather some types of vegetables. I'm using nettles, I'm using uh, also canopodium, but there are at least five or six other types of vegetables able to increase them. I don't know any probiotic able to do that now. So you may try, but I think you will fail when you want to increase NO by probiotics. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, people, thank you for attending this this webinar. Um, take a look at our website. Uh, we are going to organize more webinars uh, in the coming time. Uh, I think there are some places left for the webinar with Jaap van der Waal, who is going to talk about his work in the fascia uh, in connection to his embryology. I think it's a very interesting topic too, completely different, but also very interesting. Uh, thank you again, Bruno. Uh, thank take you, Renee. care, thank stay you. healthy, stay close, but keep distance. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. bye-bye. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you, Renee. Bye-bye. <laughs>